desde el este, Mujeres cineastas y el telón de acero, es una retrospectiva antológica realizada entre el Museo Reina Sofía y Filmoteca Española, que eh, recupera el trabajo de más de 20 cineastas de los países del telón de acero entre los años 40 y los años eh, 90, y se inscribe en un proyecto conjunto que tenemos entre el Museo Reina Sofía y Filmoteca Española desde el año 2016, en el cual todos los otoños realizamos un programa fílmico completo. My idea for the series was to expand the images that we have from this period. Often Eastern Europe is portrayed as this miserable place where we were only, you know, standing in lines and suffering and repressed. But the truth is, is that there was a scope of experiences, a scope of artistry, and this film series really represents that. I want the images that we think of during this period to be expanded to also include the beauty that we lived in our lives. It has a large scope of films from different genres, different eras, different classes, different nations. There's really a range of topics that are covered in and the idea for the series was also to ensure that people uh, know that there wasn't one way of living as a woman in this time. It's really uh, the goal for the series to show that there were very many different approaches, even based on which countries the women were coming from. The scope of filmmaking approaches throughout the series is quite varied. We have everything from magical realism, science fiction, social dramas, experimental cinema, really creative works uh, that represent a whole scope range of filmmaking. And the idea is that people realize that there wasn't just one style of filmmaking from women in Eastern Europe. We weren't one group one solid group. There was a multitude of approaches, of artists, of artistry, and of ideas representing a scope of cinema. An example of a science fiction film in the series is Ildiko and Yeti's My 20th Century from 1989. It's one of my favorite films of all time. It's her first feature-length film. In it, we meet two twin sisters that are born of light, just like cinema, and they are separated at birth, at, uh, not at birth, but at a very young age, and take very different paths through society. It's considered the first example of female science fiction film on cinema, and Ildiko and Yeti does a lot to draw us into her world, which was beyond creative at this point. Another example of a genre represented in the series is Wanda Jakubowska and Wanda Bartudna's The Last Stage from 1948. The filmmaker Wanda Jakubowska was interned uh, in, in Auschwitz. She was a survivor of Auschwitz. The film is based on the life of Mala Zittenbaum, who is a woman that Wanda Jakubowska met in the camp, along with Gerda Schneider, who was another prisoner in the camp. They wrote the script together based on the life of Mala Zittenbaum, who was a translator in the camp and was taken by the guards um, as a pawn to be used for, for their work. It's phenomenal. An example of magic realism in the series is Binka Zelyaskova, The Tied Up Balloon from 1967, coming from Bulgaria. This is a phenomenal film which starts off with a giant gold sh goldfish-shaped balloon floating over a Bulgarian village. No one knows what it is, no one knows where it comes from, but everyone starts following it like the Pied Piper. What the balloon means to some versus others is, is up for debate, but Binka Zelyaskova was f uh, banned from screening the film once the members of the Communist Party saw the film because they believed it was a mockery of themselves. A fantastic example of magical realism in the series is Daisies from Vera Chitilova from 1966. The film follows Marie 1 and Marie 2 as they embark on mischievous adventures, tricking everyone in society into falling into their glorious world of indulgences, of mischief, and of magic. El ciclo se compone de una sesión especial de clausura en la cual proyectamos eh, Meses of the Afternoon, es una eh, película clave de, de Maya Deren que concentra eh, todas las poéticas surrealistas de posguerra y eh, Dest, 
de Chantal Ackerman. Es una película esencial porque la vincula por primera vez a sus orígenes en Europa del Este. Una de las características del cine de Chantal Ackerman es el conjunto de, de mujeres y compañeras que, le, que la han acompañado siempre. Es el caso de, de la montadora Claire Atherton, por ejemplo, y es el caso también muy especial de su compañera de, de vida, eh, Sonia Bider Atherton. Sonia Bider Atherton es una virtuosa solista, ella es una de las grandes chelistas internacionales. Chantal Ackerman le dedicaría cuatro películas, cuatro bellísimos retratos fílmicos y también han colaborado en, en películas clave como Histoire d'Amérique y eh, Dest. Como evento especial del ciclo hemos desarrollado un concierto homenaje a Chantal Ackerman a las películas que realizaron conjuntamente, en el cual eh, Sonia Bider ha tocado en, en cello fragmentos de las composiciones musicales de estos films. El concierto fue un, un homenaje muy sentido a una compañera de vida que fue Chantal Ackerman y al vínculo que las unía.